All right, so we're gonna start with the cardiology case study. And you'll see that the case goes from 7.30 to 12 to 12.35. So there's a progression of information. Um, so 7.30, the provider's note. Client admitted with unstable angina, blood glucose being managed according to inpatient insulin protocol. Renal panel and BNP are slightly out of range, but much improved. Client reports sleeping well, but this morning mentions increased dyspnea on exertion and feeling tired. Chest clear and oxygen saturation normal. Continue amlodipine, metoprolol, and twice daily frosamide. Denies chest pain, ready for cardiac rehab. Case manager working on discharge plans for tomorrow. Then the nurse's note at noon is that the glucose is 190, insulin administered per protocol. Client reports chest heaviness and is sitting up on the side of the bed over the bedside table. Chest pain PRN order started. Blood pressure 146 over 92, heart rate 92, respiratory rate 28. At 1235, the nurse makes another note. The client has persistent chest heaviness despite administration of nitroglycerin and an oxygen saturation of 90% on four liters of oxygen. New orders received, administered 60 milligrams furosemide, increased oxygen delivery to keep oxygen saturation from above 92%, lab work in progress, and ECG completed. So before you even look at the question, what things are you thinking? An MI. Okay. What else? Oxygen's kind of low, even though they're on four liters. Okay. The chest pain persists after nitro. Right. So the difference between angina and a heart attack is what? Kind of. With nitro, angina would go away. It should be relieved, and if it's not, then that's when you're worried about it persisting, right? The question is, the nurse administers nitroglycerin and four liters of oxygen to a client with chest pain and heaviness. Which follow-up findings cause the nurse to contact the provider? So this is the part where you're evaluating the interventions that you've done to see if they were effective, right? Heart rate of 92 beats a minute, better or worse? It's the same. Okay. Um, heaviness and pain persists. Worse. Okay. Um, the glucose level of 190. Like it doesn't even matter, right? Yeah. Totally irrelevant. Um, oxygen saturation 90% on four liters per nasal cannula. Better or worse? Worse. Right. We want it to go up, right? And so now you've got a, a cycle going where the decreased oxygen makes the heart work harder, the heart works harder, and it needs more oxygen. Blood pressure 146 over 92. Are we worried about it? Right? Lots of people walk around with 146 over 92. Would rather it not be there, but not concerning right now. Okay. What do you hope to see from the Lasix? Increased urine output, decreased um, like long crackles, like lungs clear. Did the patient have crackles to begin with? So we don't know what their lung sounds were like. What other things? might you look at in your patient to know if the Lasix works? The blood pressure might come down. What else? Decreased shortness of breath. What do you hope to see for the oxygen saturation? What makes you happy when you go in and take somebody's O2 sat? 100%. <laughs> and even like 95 would make us feel a whole lot more comfortable considering that they're having increased workload. With the ECG, what do you hope? What do you hope it shows? Normal sinus. Normal sinus for the win, right? Okay. What would be concerning on it? T wave. If the T waves were changed at all, right? So if the T waves are flat, if they peak, anything like that, right? For your next question, it is the nurse administers that 60 milligrams of furosemide to the client with chest heaviness which best indicates that the medication was effective and the client's condition is improving. So all of these are going to be something that you're thrilled about, right? But the question asks which one is the best indicator, which means all of them are good. One really tells you something, okay? So the blood pressure of 138 over 84, we know that's positive. Does that really tell you anything? Okay. Not really. The oxygen saturation of 92% on a face mask. That's good, right? Are we happy that they're on a face mask? 
all right? Um, you're an output of 700 milliliters an hour for the past hour. We like that, right? But do we have anything to compare it to? Do you have any, this patient might be holding three liters. You have no idea, right? The client laying in a semi-recumbent position. What position were they when the nurse went in at 12? They were sitting up over the bedside table, right? So when you're thinking about which things are concerning, out of all of those four, which one really tells you that the patient is doing better? The, the fact that they're able to rest comfortably and they don't need to sit up to breathe. Which findings on the diagnostic test results cause the nurse to notify the provider that the client may need additional interventions? Flattened T wave compared to the previous ECG, right? Sinus tack at 105? Do I really care? Not especially. Elevated cardiac enzyme results? I care, but do I expect it to be that way? Yeah, I mean, obviously they've had some sort of cardiac event, so the enzymes ought to be trending up a little bit. A rise in the BNP. Does that mean anything to you right now? No, but if it's going up or down, like how long does that take to go up and down? Like that's a long-term kind of evaluation, right? So the only one that really is concerning out of those is the changes in that T-wave.